Well, hello everyone. I am uh, Jim McNeil, Senior Product Manager for Audible Magic, and here to give a presentation, obviously, on um, uses of automated content recognition technologies for broadcast. I am not Vance Ikazoy, as is in the schedule. Unfortunately, Vance could not be with us today, but uh, hopefully I'll fill his shoes here. So, just a brief overview of who Audible Magic is. Uh, we were founded in 1999 with our headquarters in Los Gatos, California, near San Jose and uh, we have offices in Berkeley and in London. We're a business, business provider for the identification of audio and video content, and we are the leading ACR technology adopted by the industry with a portfolio of 33 allowed patents and more pending. And we're, we have powered companion apps for a lot of the major broadcasters and um, have done both infrastructure and device deployments. Uh, we have trusted relationships with the music labels in film and TV studios, just a few of those Logos are here. You'll recognize several of those. But first of all, I wanted to talk about a little bit, when we talk about ACR, you think about fingerprinting or watermarking. What Audible Magic does is fingerprinting. Um, and what we don't do necessarily is watermarking, but I want to provide a, a brief overview of the differences between the two. So fingerprinting creates a digital signature from an existing asset whereas Watermark inserts a dig digital signature into an asset. Fingerprinting does not alter the original media, whereas Watermarking digitally alters the original media but is not perceptible to humans. Fingerprinting includes metadata for rights information, and Watermarking can be tracked back to the originator, even down to the theater that it was broadcast from where somebody had maybe um, redistributed it illegally. Uh, one key difference here between fingerprinting and watermarking is that the reference fingerprint for fingerprinting can be created at, at any time, whereas with watermarking you've got to think about it beforehand in, in pre-production and um, have to have it ready to go and you can't really go back after things have been distributed and create a fingerprint for it to be recognized. So fingerprints are really if you think about it just the same way as fingerprinting your fingers for um, uh, going to the DMV, right? You get put into the database of known content out there and for some reason you do something wrong and you're, they're trying to find out um, who the bad guy was. They're going to reference your unknown content, that fingerprint that was found on some item uh, against the national database. And so the same way what we do is take different segments of an audio signature, roughly down as um, tight as 25 millisecond segments, and you take that unknown fingerprint reference against uh, 20 some odd different vectors of known content, and that's how we um, recognize the digital fingerprint. So this might be a little, little small for the eyes there, but hopefully online it's easy to see. So the use case here is with um, a broadcaster where we've actually seeded in known sets of content for um, Bud Light ads and Taco Bell and, and programming content, we can then, after taking the live stream and comparing it against our known database, set the markers of where we know all that content appears in the broadcast. And a little bit more um, detailed picture here, um, in a scenario where you're doing, um, for example, second screen applications, um, we can take the programming data and the advertising information and put it into our database. Um, we're also taking live that broadcast capture and on the device side, whether that's consumer applications, television, uh, set-top boxes or anything like that, you can either have it live on the device itself or have that information checks, checked against one of our hosted databases. So we have solutions across the distribution platform, everything from ingest to distribution, as I've explained. Um, probably one of the key use cases is copyright compliance um, and um, usage reporting in several of the companies that we work with in that arena. Also on the management side, content management side, uh, you can do um, video repurposing and asset verification in some of the companies that we work with there. And on the delivery side, uh, licensing compliance, enabling uh, anti-ad skipping, for example, um, and more importantly for doing uh, dynamic ad insertion 
uh, and monetization for OTT, and um, even doing subscriber authorization by recognizing what that program content is that'll automatically unlock the device. And some of the companies that we're, we're, we are working with or have worked with in the past here. And lastly, on the consumption side, I think I talked a little bit about some of the second screen applications um, where we have um, an interactive program that I'll talk a little bit more about that use case here in, in a second. And again, some of the more recognizable logos that we work with there. Excuse me. On the uh, compliance and licensing side, several of the companies we work with, Facebook is, as you probably know, is, is one of our biggest customers. Anytime you upload a, uh, a video to Facebook and it flags you for content violation, that's us behind the scenes. And so that use case, basically, uh, when a user uploads that video, um, it gets checked against our database, and then if it does find a match, it will get flagged. And that can happen either for Facebook or any other social media site that integrates our technology. We've also done several consumer device and application second screen apps for, for these companies. Um, <coughs> and uh, obviously I need a quick drink of water, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and so in, the, in this case where we're doing a um, second screen application, we have both the live broadcast going across and a, um, a synchronization app that is set that knows that, that this, they happen to be looking at the Gone with the, uh, the Wind movie, for example. Um, we can set interactive program information to go into there at certain time segments during the movie to show actor information or even e-commerce opportunities as well. And all you need to do to uh, implement this is to put our SDK onto the device. We've also done some infrastructure deployments for InSequence and Verizon. Verizon app was actually a uh, anti-skip uh, skip forward capability so it would recognize that you were trying to play back something within the C3 window and it wouldn't allow you to fast forward. After three days it would allow you to do that. So a little bit more in depth on some of our technology use cases. Uh, in compliance, you know, we check for the, the copyright material in uploaded media, so when you're uploading that video, it will go through the process of uh, looking for that content or the, the copyright material in your content and send the, the rights and rules to the online service provider for action, whether that's block, allow, or monetize. And then that video gets posted up. Um, Another application is looking at peer-to-peer um, -peer networks. Um, if you think universities and things like that where you're looking for uh, copyright material that's being redistributed on there, we can catch, capture that um, with a solution that we have for that industry as well. And it automates the, um, the DMCA takedown process and reduces the number of DMCA notices that those, comp or those platforms and uh, universities, for example, get from um, the providers. And again, so with the uh, second screen applications here, um, it does enable more of an e-commerce type solution and um, any of the background information about a broadcast. One interesting use case here was um, a app that was developed by Disney Pixar for visually impaired people. Oddly enough, I didn't even know this stat, but 21 million people in the United States are blind or visually impaired. And what this does, it gives a um, Disney Pixar created an app that on all of their uh, 15 or 16 some odd movies, either um, in the theater or on demand in, in, uh, in the home, it will provide additional information along with what's going on. So if you couldn't visually see that Dory was following the, uh, the starfish or the sand dollars or whatever it was that was left on the, the, uh, the, the ground for her to, or the sand for her to fall or um, it gives you an audio reference to what was going on in that picture. And um, one interesting use case we have here, and I uh, uh, actually have a, uh, a guest to help talk about this use case here, is Yuval Fisher, who is a CTO of MVPD for Imagine Communications. And the use case here effectively is for us to locate um, study where, where you don't have SCSI 35 markers in an incoming signal, we can detect those ads 
by integrating with a uh, encoding manufacturer such like um, Imagine. And um, we provide the markers for you to then pass on to whatever SSAI system uh, you have, and in this case, Yuval's. And uh, I will let him talk a little bit about the, this wonderful animated slide. <laughs> well, great, uh, thanks for, for uh, letting me speak. Um, I, I work at Imagine Communications. We're a vendor that has multiple solutions, including uh, playout, uh, networking, uh, ad management, we manage about $25 billion in ad management through our software, we don't get the $25 billion. And of course distribution, and in distribution we have multiple solutions for OTT and broadcast, and in particular ad insertion. And one of the issues with ad insertion is, the ad insertion ecosystem depends on markers in the stream that tell you where ads can be substituted, where you can get local ads for your local businesses, and where you can put national ads. Now it turns out, national ads aren't marked. Only the local ads, only the spots where local ads can be inserted are marked. Also, when we get content, uh, so-called ethnic content, that comes from abroad and is delivered to uh, audiences in the US, that content is not marked with SCT 35 cues because that ecosystem, that advertising ecosystem, doesn't exist outside of the US. And so what do you do in those cases? How do you monetize that video? Well, by using Audible Magic's technology, we can add 35 markers, which are represented in this beautiful slide by red rectangles, the obvious marking for 35, red rectangle. Um, and so when ads come in, in this particular case, let's say the car, we recognize the fingerprint, or rather Audible Magic's technology recognizes the fingerprint, and uses our technology to drive SAT 35 cues into the stream at exactly the right spot. Right, so we align everything. Once the 35 markers are in the stream, the downstream component works just as they would had the 35 markings been there before. So 35 means SAT 35, it's a specification for marking up ads, ad locations. So, this allows us to mark ads and then downstream substitute them, monetize the ads. But it presents an opportunity actually to really change the way video is monetized, especially in the US. Because as I mentioned, the national ads today aren't marked at all. And if you can mark those through ad recognition, you have then potentially new monetization opportunities for cloud DVR services. Now cloud DVR today um, in the US requires every person that re records a show to have its own copy. But if you create new monetization opportunities, they may be shareable with the original content owner and then you may be able to negotiate rights for that DVR content. So through this simple technology, those complicated relationships, which today require massive amounts of money to be spent on storage, for example, may be revisited. So this actually could be quite a disruptive technology altogether, as well as a monetization opportunity for, for content owners. Great, thank you, Yuval. Yep, pleasure. And this just kind of demonstrates a, a signal going up, probably not very easy to see, but we're just, effectively sending out the, the markers via XML or text that say here's where that ad that we recognized on the, the broadcast starts and stops. And then that information then gets passed on to the SSAI system. Um, so just an overview, uh, again, uh, some of the applications for ACR technology and broadcast or compliance. Second screen, OTT authentication, content management solutions, broadcast monitoring and utilization. Um, apps for the hearing impaired and, and visually impaired. Um, and of course, the main reason we're here today at NAB, advertising detection for OTT server-side ad insertion. So with that, I, I'll take any, uh, any questions, but uh, probably the easiest because we are right there in the corner. Uh, just step on over to our booth and uh, we'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you.